Hello. <laughs> so I uh, canceled the stream, but I was able to get an alternate cord connected here. So I'm hoping you guys still come by to sew a guinea pig with me, but I'm not sure. I'm feeling kind of funny about the internet right now. I just tested it and it's amazing, but I did have a weird little thing. Like it just, it disconnected me to the chat. So um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> What's ahead for us today? Um, something in the wall. So um, I hope that you can see me and hear me okay. Hi, late night. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. So um, I could have I could have canceled and made sure everything was okay by Saturday, but um, I'm thinking that I think we have it all sorted. So we'll see. I want to make a guinea pig too. So. So this is what we're planning today. Um, I have two cut out that we cut out yesterday by Funky Friends Factory. And you know, I think it's gonna go, you know, like pretty smooth. The directions are really good too. I may have to watch them pretty closely though. Oh, okay, great late night. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> so bear with me with the, I've never sewn a guinea pig before. So we're gonna do this together, right? All right, let's see here. I think I want to leave this open. I kind of wish I had a little book holder right now. I'll put it right. I'll put it right here. All right. Hi, Stephanie. How's it going? <laughs> All right. So let's see here. We have our side, our front, the face, and the belly. That looks like a guinea pig, right? And then these little helpful letters and symbols are um, kind of the order of operation. So, you know, you go alphabetically. So A to B and then um, C to D, that kind of thing. So let's see. I'm going to also kind of keep an eye on the directions so that I make sure I don't like get ahead anywhere. But I do have, I do have two going too. So I think I'll do, what I'll do is I'll do them um, con is that concurrently? I'll do them both at the same time. <laughs> I don't know what I mean, but that's my plan. So let's see here. Cause then that way we'll have a few less pieces I think to deal with. So let's see, let's get our gray pieces first. A to B. A to B. Like this, right? Like this. This is going to be interesting. Maybe I shouldn't have sewed two. <laughs> yeah, right late night. Hi, Malin. Malin, thanks for that email. That was amazing. Appreciate all that help. I um, find it. Oh, my machine's not even on yet. I, I noticed a typo. The very first word of the pattern has a typo. Do you know how many hundreds of times I've looked at that thing? Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna try and make my stitch line kind of small because, you know, when you stuff, it gets pu pushed out. But yeah, I'm not really a stuffed animal person at all. So I can relate to that late night. And it's funny because my, my kid, she was really into stuffies, but not into dolls or any of that stuff. So it's kind of, it's kind of funny, you know? Yeah, a bit of a different project. <laughs> Hi, Ray. Yeah, I know. I think so. Yeah, cool. you found me. Yes, I see your comments over there. Um, I think starting Saturday, we won't have this like double stream window thing anymore um, because I'm going to get rid of the program. Hi, Annette. Welcome. If you're here with us live today, welcome, welcome. So, um, yeah, I because I'm sick of this like go live thing and then I have to reconfirm the whole stream and then it's in a different window you know so okay so we have a to b and then i'm going to do the c to d and then i'm going to do a through d on the other one that way i have less pieces to deal with you know so let's see this goes i recut out you know what i the mistake i made yesterday was i folded this fabric like this and then my birds were upside down on one side, so 
course, right? So I actually ended up um, also fussy cutting and adding a bit more floral to his um, shanks. <laughs> <laughs> because I somehow got like the most boring parts of that fabric on these pieces as well and those. So I barely had enough, but I got it to go. All right, so we have that looking like a guinea pig. Okay. I like fun little projects though. Like I feel like... um Sometimes it's nice when you get to do something that you normally wouldn't get to sew and you get to give it away just for the experience because I'm definitely a process sewer. I'm a, pros a product sewer as well though. So yeah, I need to raise my chat window so you guys don't get cut off at the bottom there. There we go. <laughs> oh gosh, late night. I didn't make my daughter any. I made a few, like overall as a knitter, but I feel you on that. I, it just wasn't my thing. I'm so practical, you know? All right, so we're gonna keep these handy. Let's do this one now. That goes up. Really don't wanna get confused. Oh my gosh, please, please, there we go. This way. <laughs> what happened? These two could not look more different, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was only one I made. <laughs> exactly. It's very precious. Exactly. My mom had, like, just remembered the other day, like, she had, um, apparently she had a bunch of stuffed birds my mom's really into birds in fact it's she's doing a lot of watercolor these days and artwork and um, they all it all centers around birds um and she's always been like a really good like sketcher like good at drawing and stuff i've always really envied her skill with it i like i like the personality of her sketches they're really sweet and um she just remembered the other day that she had all these stuffed birds. I think they may have been Webkins. And they were in her closet. Like they kind of, she was just like, they're just keeping themselves, you know, they were keeping themselves like um, entertained as, you know, or whatever, they hung out in there. But she just remembered she lost them all in the fire. Like it's weird the little things that come up. You, you're just like, oh, right. I don't have that anymore, you know? So it was kind of fun to think about doing this, like when we stumbled upon this pattern at the fabric store, she was like, oh, it's a guinea pig, you know? And she's like, I know exactly where I'd put this. And so I was like, I'll make this for you, no problem. This is fun, it's something different. And I think like, um, contrary to what a lot of people think, little kids actually like homemade stuffies more than you think. They don't need to be plush and you can make them in minky. So, you know, hi Andy, how's it going? Yeah, right, late night, I know. I've made a few things. I've made two cats, and then I made a panda bear and a robot. Oh, I made a Loch Ness monster for my mom because we went to Loch Ness in Scotland, and she almost fell in, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen at the expense of my mom in my life. Me and my sister were on the shore when it almost happened, and we were trying to hold it together so bad because my mom was mad and but she almost fell in the Loch Ness like it was and it was not a pretty spot it was a gross mossy spot so um and then um I've made a snail which is sitting over there and I made something else from that knitting amigurumi book you know what was it I don't remember so I know Laura right <laughs> we'll see this is the easy part <laughs> We always have our some side, guinea sides, you know? So uh, let's see what's next. All right, so now I'm going to front side and back pieces together from E to F. Did I just do that already? So I did A to B and C to D, doop, doop. And then front, back, and sides from E to F. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna iron these actually. 
because you know I actually my my instinct is to top stitch all this because <laughs> I'm an overachiever <laughs> Let's see, I'm hoping my camera, uh oh, gosh, I just tripped over the internet cord that I had to jerry-rig. All right, here we go. I think I'm going to press them towards the center. It's a little warm, not warm enough quite yet. So now we kind of see how big he's gonna be, right? So I think, I thought he had a stripe right here. I guess he doesn't, so, or she. Um, yeah, I guess not. Okay. Just on the head, okay. Okay, that's cute. I like these fabrics. They're not really something I would get. They're pretty. All right, this, I definitely like this color scheme. We know, we all know that. I have a friend who's, this is like, these are her colors for sure. She painted her whole yarn shop <laughs> these colors. And every time she picks out a project, it's either coral, coral or teal. But she's actually broken out of that box a lot lately. She started realizing, wow, everything I have is coral or teal. Oh, wow. You made a clapper and an all. You made an all? Yeah, right, Lena, exactly. Yeah, that is pretty special. All right, so now we're gonna do E to F, which is the spine. So I'm actually gonna make sure these little seams line up first. I'd really like to. Get them to line up really good. I'm gonna tack them. Might as well. You know? Let's just see if I get it before I do the whole seam. Oh, that's, I nailed it. <laughs> Yay. I think making this the stitches really close together is a good idea. I feel like it's a little more maneuverable because it's not like leaping forward, you know, big stitches. And, um, it, you know, then that way when I go to stuff it, I'm also not worried. I'm sure she has a recommendation in her instructions on what the proper stitch length should be. So I'd follow that. Yeah. Here I do quilting. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I don't know a lot about woodworking, but I un like I understand how things go together. And so anytime I'm doing something in that realm where I'm just don't know anything, it's frustrating because I don't know the tools. I don't know what each one does. And I but I know how things go together. And so I just don't but I don't have the right skills for that. Let's see. That one I got a little off, but it's actually probably not going to show up once we do this little curve here. So I think uh, I was blaming that I couldn't stream today on the mouse slash rat. I'm pretty sure it was a rat that tried to move in. Remember I told you guys about the rat that I moved in. Um, the rat has definitely been dispatched. He's not here anymore, but I thought maybe he had chewed the cords. So that's, um, but then we realize it's the receptacle of where I prep plug in. So 
you know, I was feeling kind of bad. I was like, dang, you know, I'm kind of doing this thing in, in honor of a rodent and they're doing me wrong. So I'm going to try and press the seam open best I can. Only via PBS. Hey, those are some good skills then. PBS is great. I think it would be so cool to host a show on PBS, a sewing show, <laughs> you know? That would be so cool. Like, I can't believe I think that. Like, before that would terrify me. Like, I, that would give me sweats. But now I'm kind of like, oh, God, it would be just so fun to be a part of a, a like, a, you know, an establishment that is um, bent on, you know, educating and supporting people. That'd be really cool. I think it's a good affiliation, you know? Not like a not like a DIY show um, on a other network, because those are a little more commercial. I'm too boring for that. Can I do oh I need my salami. That's what it is. This is what you gotta make next, Andy. Unless you already have. <laughs> or a sleeve board. This is like the um, soft version of a sleeve board. Do you think this is ridiculous that I'm pressing the seam open? Maybe I should just press it to the side. Maybe I should read the instructions. Let's see what it says. Will that YouTube? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really say to iron at all. Let me, let me browse it a little bit. I like the tip on putting your templates on a cereal box, though. That, that's pretty good if you don't have any cardstock or something, you know? I think this is going to go really quickly. I think I'll just press it. Hmm. No, I really want it open. Sorry. I don't want to see a bump on his back, you know? But this might be a little overkill. Maybe I'll just press it to one side. It's not easy. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I made it. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty cool, the granddad skills. Tried and true. My oh I keep stepping on my ironing cord. I've never done that before. Home stretch, home stretch. Thanks so for the, all the like audible um, and audiobook recommendations, you guys. I just might be able to get my 22 purchased <laughs> before my account <laughs> renews. I can't believe that you your credits get taken away now. Is that like going forward forever now? Because the reason I got the whole thing, the bigger package was so they wouldn't, you know? Do I have sawdust? Yeah, probably. You think the steam will be bad for it? Probably. I don't know, if I saw a, a, anything that big, I'd, it'd probably make me jump. 
walking around. <laughs> You're both, you're, you are planning a sleeve board and a hand? Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's true. It does, it is in your name. <laughs> it does sound like there's sawdust in there or something like that. That doesn't seem like that would be an ideal filling for something you iron though. No, it is good? Oh, okay. Hey Megan, how's it going? <laughs> Alrighty. So I forgot to get my eyes and nose last night. So, all right, so we're kind of done with these until we need them to do the feet and leg positions, but we might be able to figure those out. Why did this, was it supposed to go on the seam here? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She didn't say that. Huh. Okay, maybe it's just a, a location thing. All right, so now we do our um, face, fore, and forehead. So, E, F, where'd G go? Was there no G? We have H, um, that's a foot. And we have a chin, we have J. Okay, these are our pieces. There's G right there. Okay, so from H to J. H to J, H to J, H. H, H to J, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, they, they were like that ray for certain accounts, but not the like platinum one. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that, Megan. It, I was canceling it. And at the last second, we found a different cord that would reach to the, the um, socket. So what happened is like my internet between where it connects to the wall thing there's something going on there. So we just, I plugged into someone's workstation like 20 feet away <laughs> who just left. <laughs> that's how we got around it. Okay, so H to J, that's what I said, right? H to J. H to J. Just, you know, we're production sewing guinea pigs. <laughs> I bet it does, Ray. Wood is so, um, has so many different properties, you know? All right, so this is my H to J. So it was like this, right? No. Okay. Like this, okay. H to J, and now we're gonna do, so the forehead piece to the face pieces, K, H, K. K, H, K, ooh. Fun. K, H, K, all right. Let's do this. This is the tight stuff. So I think I'm going to mark, I thought I did. There's a little notch there. Like I can see it in the paper. Oh yeah, it's really small. That's my center point. 
So I'd be really careful with this piece because the this piece, the face, um, would really stretch easily. So I'm going to kind of put my non-negotiable spot here, try and do it perpendicular to that edge there. Oh, at a pet store, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And aquarium grout, well that's smart. Yeah, don't ever use things like beans <laughs> because if you if your sewing space is anywhere where rodents can get it, they will start eating your pattern weights. I had a friend that happened to. We worked in I worked in like a I rented a space at an incubator. So they um, helped small businesses by providing like communal communal spaces basically you know so i had a room inside this building and so then i just played into the whole thing and um but it was a little bit industrial you know the setting was pretty industrial and so she was having trouble with mice eating her pattern weights i think i may have a tuck let's see I imagine if you get this on Cricut, you could just have a guinea pig with a little bit of personality on his face, you know? Yeah, see right here. Is that a tuck or no? It's just a, actually, you see that? It's a, not a smooth curve. So I'm gonna get rid of that. It looks a little smoother on this side. This side though, not so much. dangerous taking out a few stitches right here, you know? But once I turn it, I don't want it to be like, I don't want him to have like a wart on his nose. All right, I think I got it, let's see. Phew. What's that? What is that? It's just a wrinkle? Oh no, I think I have one stitch right here. You know, sometimes your back stitch is too freaking straight. It goes straight back, not along the seam, you know? At least on my industrial, it does that. Yeah, you see that? It was my back stitches foiling me. I definitely don't want to take out my back stitch because, you know, when I start stuffing it. So let's see if that worked and then I'm going to test the seam. Oh yeah, I think I need to put some stitches back in there. Where is this at? Right here? Oh, there I see it. I see it. Okay, I see it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Try and do this in your first shot. <laughs> Two as I say, not as I do. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna pull this. I'm gonna make sure I pull this down out of the way this time a little better. Cause I'm finding I can get a smoother curve if I'm on the face side, but I would more likely like to sew from the other side cause it's so small, you know? Yeah, they can get moldy, it's true, it's true. Okay, I did it, but I feel like it's not very smooth right there, you see that? Let's try and smooth it out. Try and spread everything out as tight as possible. Okay, the best news is you put your nose right over this thing. So don't kill yourself. Okay, so there's this little 
face. <laughs> okay, let's do this one now. Okay, it goes up here. Okay, okay. So, I'm going to try it again from this side, and hopefully it goes a little smoother this time. Now that we know what we're kind of looking for. Oh, wait, where's my, where's my notch? There's my notch. Okay. <laughs> An oak point turner. That's nice. Use washers with those weighted marbles. <laughs> I are the washers hard to pick up? That's what I always think when I see them. I don't really like it when I can't grab something, you know. But you could put a fabric handle on them. You know what I mean? Like if you if you tied. Um, bias around the washer and then maybe put a knot in between like a little loop with a knot there it would maybe stick up and then you could grab it because I, I just wouldn't like having to try and grab it off the table if it was hard my favorite pattern weights are the ones that have big handles you know now she says to pin the heck out of this but um I find these really small areas, they're just, I'm not very good at pinning those little areas. I'm better at just trying to, why did I pin that from that side? Um, I'm better at trying to just do it on the fly. You know, another thing you could do, actually, let's try this. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out. It's not guaranteed, but it might help. I'm just trying to give another option if someone's having trouble with this. If anyone's making a guinea pig, <laughs> I don't know how big the guinea pig market is, but you never know. All right, so let's see if I start from here and work my way out. I really want this to be sh straight to this though, like not at an angle like this. So that little notch like this. I'm not going to backstitch this one either. I'm going to backstitch it when I come upon it the next time. Well, that was pretty easy. That was a lot easier. Let's see if I can. Oh, this is contrary to how I want to hold it. All right, let's try it. We'll go this way now. I wanted to move from, go from the center and work out, but I'm having trouble positioning it that way. So let's try and meet up with it now. And at least it's already sewn. Oof, I don't know. I don't think that solution was guaranteed. It made that first leg really nice. I'm holding it underneath. Okay, okay. With fluffing. <laughs> okay, that actually worked pretty good. I, I think I got lucky, to be honest. So let's see. Let's make sure this is nice and smooth. I'm going to put a back tack in here now. And like I said, you do cover this little join up with a nose. Be careful where you pin it, you you pick your fabric because these little white dots, you see there's these little white dots in the fabric. It looks like I scratched off the ink right there. You know what I mean? 
Right, Ray, I know. I know what you mean. I like doing that too. Lately, I've been listening to music because of what I have to focus on. And um, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even listening to music I know or personally follow or know anything about. It's not even like a genre I'm not I'm like that big in. But I, been, if any of you have the Apple Music the program, like Apple Music, um, I've been listening to one of their radio stations just called Chill Radio, and it's great. I get so much done when I'm listening to that. All right, let's see here. <laughs> Candy pigs. Okay, so what's next? So the chin piece to the face piece is L J L. L J L. All right. Mouth area. Okay. There is a notch. Perfect, perfect. And then L, J, L. Okay, so we're doing the exact same thing this time. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, right, Megan. I actually went through. I, I couldn't find what I was thinking I had, but I do have these. Vintage button. They're pink. I don't know. I don't know if that'll, I don't know if that'll work, you know, it's kind of goopy. Too bad I can't put it on this way where it would hug the nose. I don't think that'll work. I think I'm going to have to, um, embroider them, you know, that might be the safest bet. <laughs> a buffalo, it could totally be a buffalo. <laughs> Guinea pig or buffalo? Your choice. Those are some stunted legs, though. I keep forgetting to pin this before I start sewing. It's kind of annoying. This curve's a little bigger. I don't think it's going to be as tricky. All right, let's see here. Where's the curve? Just walking it around stitch by stitch. Oof, come on, come on, come on, baby. You can make it. That's pretty good. Oof, maybe not. Okay, I think those are just wrinkles. Okay, that actually went okay. Phew! This kind of looks like teeth. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, where's this one? Here we go. Let's pin this first this time. A little too big. Yeah, kind of the wrong shape. Yeah, but you know. You, you do really start thinking about the shapes of animals when you make things like this. I think it's a kind of an interesting, just kind of fascinating exercise, you know? You start thinking about like where things are at on an animal and and when you do things like that, like, oh, it kind of reminds me of a blah, blah, blah. And then you start looking at them and you're like, wow, it's nothing like that. Why did I think that? You know, it's like, oh, what, what are their legs really like, you know? I think too, like if, um, like when, my daughter was younger and then I would be asked to, you know, mama, will you draw me a horse? And you're like, anything but a horse, <laughs> you know, you're just like, please don't make me draw legs. <laughs> you know, you start really trying to think about it and you're like, all right, uh, bring me uh, one of your favorite books, you know, and you kind of look and you're kind of trying to, <sighs> and then they're like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> you're like me either. But I was, can I make, can I sew you a horse? You know what I mean? Nancy! Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna use some yarn. 
Oh, I may have I may have botched that. Um, and then do it. Do the eyes and nose that way. All right, so let's um, let's iron these to get these wrinkles out because they're not gonna go away if I don't do it now. You know. I don't need to iron the body anymore, right? We just did that. We're doing the heads. Just making a guinea pig, Nancy, you know, like we do. So let's see. What do you think it wants to do? Like that, right? Okay. I use the salami more for guinea pigs 